JY is back in the building with another reaction video. So I'm going to be reacting to a video about food poverty. People that cannot afford to buy normal groceries and fill up their cupboards. So people are having to skip meals and that. People are having to go to the reduced section in the supermarket and fight over food. I saw a post. My girl sent me a post today. People are fighting over reduced food. Food that's on its way out. People are fighting over it in the supermarket. It's ridiculous, blood. But this is what happens when you don't make something of yourself. Yeah? You end up fucking fighting over food like a wild hyena. This is just past its date. They've changed the branding on this too, so they've reduced that. Cheapest breakfast going is cereal. We've got the fancy pasta here, but this is also reduced, which is why I've got a couple of packets of it. Fiona works five days a week, regularly misses meals, and always buys discounted food. Whenever I go around supermarkets, I try and pick up whatever the reduced sticker deals are. Yet having enough money to feed her two children still requires hours of planning, preparation, and scavenging. I don't literally scavenging. Literally scavenging. Like, imagine, yeah, of being so broke that you can't just go to Tesco's and get what you need like a normal person. You can't just go in and like, oh, Baked beans, oh, some bread, oh, some sausages, oh, a couple pizzas and that, salt and that. No, you have to strategically go in there and know what times they're going to put the reduced food out and literally plan this thing like it's a fucking murder, like it's a, a heist, a bank robbery. This is madness, blood. All because people don't get educated and that and they think, yeah, no, nah, I'll just be all right to work in Asda and that. I'm telling you, this woman is not a doctor, a lawyer, or a banker. She don't have five, six properties, blood. She's struggling. All because at some point she didn't want to make no sacrifice. She didn't want to make no sacrifice in the classroom and get educated. And she didn't want to make no sacrifice monetary. She didn't want to put away 20, 30 grand and buy this property, then leverage that property and get that property. Now she's sitting on five, six properties and that. There's nobody who's sitting on five, six properties who are sitting in their yard, freezing, worried about turning on the gas. There's nobody that has five, six properties that's sitting in their yard, hungry, because they have to skip meals, blood. You think I skip meals? Yeah, I saw, certain times when I'm at my mum's yard or whatever, I eat one time a day, because I can't be bothered to eat. I leave, I, I'll leave it so late. Like, I'll have my lunch. Let's say, for example, I go down to Edmund on a Friday, isn't it? on a Saturday, I'll have my lunch at like three o'clock. And I'll eat such a big portion of chicken and chips in that, that man's not even hungry until about eight, nine o'clock. Then I can't even bother to go Chinese shopping. Like, my mum don't cook on the weekends and I ain't cooking when I'm going down there. So, yeah, I'll skip meals in that. Not because I'm broke. Not because I have to strategically skip meals so I've got money for the next day. Come on, man. These are poor people problems. Furthermore, it's not even poor. This is peasant man problems. Peasant people problems. But you can't eat blood. The fuck? I don't really think that there's a switch off from it, which is why I try and avoid supermarkets now. If I go into supermarkets, I definitely go into hunter mode. Hunter mode? About what stickers I can get, what's on offer. As the cost of living bites, three meals a day has become a luxury for millions. To help, Fiona runs a community kitchen at this school in Halifax. Matt Perry is the head teacher. This is where the magic happens. Donated food is transformed into free meals. It's about 300 meals a week we make. We've helped probably over 700 families and, you know... She probably works there so she can teach some of the food. <laughs> oh, my days. Hundreds of staff who get to take the food as well. Do you think it's the responsibility of schools and teachers to provide services like this community kitchen? I think in the strictest definition, no. You know, schools remit, my remit is to prove educational outcomes. I think what we're finding is more and more, it's not just the... Families that are known that you've worked with, it's more and more families saying, look, can we just have some help? Can we have a conversation? You're seeing the signs in young children. Hot food lines on this side, pizzas on second aisle. The charity, the Food Foundation, has tracked the UK's food insecurity levels since the start of the pandemic. In recent months, it's detected an alarming rise in cases and shared its findings with Newsnight. This data suggests nearly one in five households in the UK ate less food or skipped meals in September. That's an estimated 9.7 million adults. 
but it's thought it's families with children who are struggling the most. As this graph shows, since April... Well, at least now we'll know that the UK's body mass index, the BMI, will drop because everyone's going to be losing weight due to skipping meals. Food insecurity has increased more amongst this group compared to households without children. That's a 50% rise in just five months. The government has invested £24 million into offering free school breakfast in England. Nearly 2 million pupils are also eligible for free school meals, but charities say the current threshold is too low and should be extended to all families on universal credit. Fiona would welcome that extra support. It would make the difference. I to bet she people, would. Which I'd be able to use in different ways, which is just would be so good. There will be people who will hear millions of children in the UK are living in food poverty and they won't believe it. What would you say to them? Oh, it's very real. It's very real. If I'm on an OK income and my kids are still struggling and I'm still struggling. There's no way you could be on an OK. I mean, everyone's definition of an OK income is different. To me, an OK income, an OK income is like 40 grand a year. Her definition of an OK income is probably 20. Because there's no way, that even 40 grand a year, like, come on, man. Come on, you should be able to eat three meals a day without having to scary, scavenge and forage for food in the fucking reduced aisle, man. Come on, man. Like, yeah, I'm telling you, she's probably on a really low wage. And that's what I'm saying. The bar is really low on that. People's standards are just... I, I know she's on a shit wage. Nobody that's on an okay wage in my books would be working at some kind of food bank or whatever thing she works at. That's for low paying wage type of people, blood. Yeah. Then there's so many people that are worse off. Research shows families with children have more outgoings, but are less likely to have savings and are more likely to be in debt. While the majority of parents are in work, campaigners have told us most are unable to increase their hours further. The former Children's Commissioner says the government must now treat deprivation as a national emergency. Child poverty and poverty generally, I think, is of such a, a, a level of crisis at the moment that the country needs to take this seriously. I would like to see COBRA meetings, you know, reflecting the magnitude of the situation for real families and children being held on a regular basis to look at what's happening and to find solutions and to deliver those solutions. You started working with children in the 1980s. You were the Children's Commissioner for six years. How significant is this data? I don't remember seeing it this bad. Those children are going to have much poorer life chances. They're going to get much uh, poorer educational outcomes, have worse jobs and have be a much greater pull on the public purse in the future. A government spokesperson told us measures are in place to help the most vulnerable cope with rising prices. This includes millions of households receiving payments of at least £1,200 this year. We've come to meet Phoenix, who has health problems and is unable to work. Typical. Her eldest, 15-year-old Erin, helps take care of her three younger siblings. Two years ago, we were able to afford more than we do now, and mum's still able to pay like for the gas and electric and all that. But now, well, can't really, can't really do that now. Sometimes Erin skips meals or eats less food so the younger siblings don't go hungry. Sometimes. One of my work colleagues told me about that. He said, he's a big boy now, he's like 40 years old, but he said to me, when he was younger, I think there was him and maybe three other siblings, maybe four. So there was between four and five of them and he was the oldest. And he said, yeah, there were certain days he couldn't eat. He couldn't eat because his mum couldn't afford to feed all of them. So the younger siblings used to get food and he had to go without. That, like, this is in the UK, you know. This is not my friend. My colleague is not from Jamaica. He's Jamaican, but he weren't in Jamaica when it's happening. He weren't in Afghanistan or Africa. This is in the UK, you know. There's actually kids 
that have to go without meals, you know. Now, this was, uh, let's say, my mum was probably born like, what, 82. So, yeah, early 90s and that. Yeah? If not late, late 80s. Madness. But even this girl here, watch. I mean, this, is, this documentary is probably like two, three years old or something, if that. So there's still kids going through this. I mean, I've done a reaction video about this before. About kids that have to go to school and steal food because their parents can't afford to feed them during lunch. Sometimes I'll be sad because I didn't get to have what they did. But then I'll be happy because at least they've gotten to eat their food. Wow. I do believe mum cries sometimes because she lays there at night saying, right, tomorrow's the weekend. Can't take the kids out. You know, not be able to do anything fun with them. Ah. Money worries weigh heavily on young shoulders, and sometimes it can all get too much. It's foolishness, blood. And I just feel upset because explaining what everyone has to go through in these types of situations, I know other people go through it even worse than us, and it's just, it's horrible, it's not fair, it's just... That's how you know you're from a broken home. Furthermore, she's not even from a broken home. She's from a hungry home. I've coined a new turn, eh? Even, yeah? Long are the days of calling people, saying people, labeling people from a broken home. You're from a hungry home. How do you, how, come on, man. How, how, how do you sleep at like knowing that your eldest child could not eat uh, yesterday night because you can't afford to feed all your pitney them. It's embarrassing, man. It's embarrassing. It's affecting people's lives really badly. You damn right it is. <sighs> anyway, stay where it's done now.